All right, we're going to look the federal budget in the eye right now. So poll after national poll tell us that the majority of us have no mortal idea what sequestration is or isn't. So I decided to conduct my own very random survey. I accosted my, my fellow federal travelers in a lot of different venues uh, while waiting for uh, plane trips, while boarding a plane, while browsing the uh, frozen food aisle, while waiting for our kids outside of our elementary school, and yes, while availing ourselves of public restrooms. And I asked one question, what is sequestration? Now, the answers I received were as diverse as our settings. Now, six people told me roughly that they had no idea. Three offered very interesting answers, my favorite of which was that they likened sequestration to kinky bondage. Uh, one person told me that sequestration had some connection to the federal budget, or roughly 10%, less than the federal average. Now, the kinky bondage person actually, in a twisted way, got it sort of correctly. <laughs> so, simply put, simply put, sequestration is automatic, across the board spending cuts in the name of deficit reduction. Very ironically, and sort of sadly, it was enacted on March 1st, which was the eve of Dr. Seuss's birthday. So, in the good doctor's honor, we did this. Now, the thing about sequestration is that it was a really, really bad reenactment of a piece of 1985 legislation. Imagine bringing back a 1980s fashion, or very worse, 1980s hairstyle. That's sequestration right now in 2011. It has roots in the Budget Control Act of August of 2011. Now, sequestration, the thing of it is, this was never supposed to happen. It was the worst kind of penalty dangled in front of a very badly behaving Congress to try to make Congress behave better. Well, it failed as a disciplinary measure, and it's now on track to fail us all, especially the most vulnerable Americans. And when I think of sequestration and then asking the super committee to enact deficit reduction of $1.2 trillion, I think of the definition of insanity, which is right there. So let's look at three of sequestration's dirty little secrets. Secret number one. All discretionary budget cuts are not equal. So sequestration cuts from the discretionary portion of this pie, roughly one-third of all federal spending. Now, it's supposed to cut roughly half from defense, half from non-defense discretionary spending, and all of that sounds rosy on the surface, but consider that the Pentagon budget has been more than half of all discretionary spending for decades. In fact, it's gone up. In fact, it's gone up 48% since 2012 whereas social programs have actually gone down in the last four years, and only in that same period just gone up about 8%. So what that means is that when we cut from non-defense, what's called non-defense discretionary spending or social programs, we're cutting way too spindly programs. And what that means can only be two things. We're either going to get job cuts and or we're going to get service cuts in sectors where there's already an aching gap between what's needed and what's offered. And that doesn't mean that the need's going to go away. It means that the costs are simply going to shift in order to address these really awful social inequities. <laughs> so uh, recently, a colleague of mine talked to a woman in Greenfield and said, what, what are you going to do if you have to give up some of the social programs on which you'd relied? And this woman told her that she'd have to give up her cat. Well, the cat won't be enough. It's, so here's the... Here's the uh, Secret number two, sequestration would have us believe that the budget's only about spending when we know that the budget is as much about revenue as it is about spending, right? E even though that's true, Congress has an almost mythical unwillingness to raise revenue at a time when Americans are paying and corporations are paying the lowest tax burden in more than half a century. Recently, that Congress raised taxes on the 1%, they've offered Many of them offered to contribute more. They raised $620 <coughs> extra billion dollars over a decade. That's a lot of zeros, but there's more. See the corporate taxes. On the books, large corporations are supposed to pay 35%. In actuality, they pay much less. In 2012, they could have contributed $165 billion more. Secret number three, sequestration upends democracy. We are the nation's major bill payers. Through our federal income tax and payroll taxes, we contribute to these federal funds and trust funds at the federal level. They come down to big chunks of state budgets and city coffers and local businesses and programs and to you and I when we need them. <coughs> Sequestration robs us and our lawmakers 
of making nuanced and thoughtful decisions about the fate of our nation. It's really the beginning of the unraveling of democracy, unless you and I do something. Now, recently I got an email from a woman in Arizona, I don't know her, and she said simply, sequestration is madness. We should be in the streets. And frankly, I actually couldn't agree with her more. Here's the truth. If sequestration prevails, if we don't do anything about it in a year, in five years, in 10 years, we're going to wake up in a different United States. We will no longer have the opportunity to live in the kind of robust participatory democracy that we have. So here's the secret, and it shouldn't be a secret, and, and perhaps this is the thing that we can embrace, is that we are more powerful than money in politics. We can take back our federal budget and make it by the people and for the nation. So let's get started. <laughs>